But then in the end, you want to be an entrepreneur. It's about money. You have to make an income. Because that's what you want to do. You want to be a professional. You want to create an income to keep going. And often people say, artists are poor. And probably that's a reality. If you take a look at the income, most of these very small enterprises have an income that's on the lower level. 80, 90% is below average. So the question is, why are artists poor? A lot of research have been done, a number of explanations could be discussed. For instance, one is, you like to be an artist. Hey, who are you? What are you doing? I'm an artist. Sounds good. So it's a personal gratification. Status is more important than money. We don't talk about money. I'm an artist. One explanation. Second, artists are often poorly informed about the costs of what they're doing. Art is about time intensive activities. Creative stuff is made by putting in time. So it must be expensive if you want to make an income. Then we have, of course, government subsidies. The funny thing about subsidies is often that it does not create a higher income. It creates more artists. Good discussion one. It's most of the time one of the excuses used. Then often artists depend, rely on different sources of income. They have either a partner who is rich, which is nice. They have different professions. You have a job on the side. You get different income sources. So then you can do, you make the money outside the creative industries in order to do your activities in the creative sector. Perhaps last, there is a myth of the individual artist. Creative people like to operate on an individual basis. So that means that there is hardly any social pressure within our society to talk about income. It's very difficult to find a trade union for artists. It's hardly ever done. Of course, if you want to develop your enterprise, you have to get some kind of money in order to get the enterprise off the ground. And you need some kind of an investment. It could be, of course, private, your own, your family, friends, whatever. You could find money on there. But also banks, of course. Banks are in the business for money. But money, if you talk about banks, money is the last subject that they talk about. They want to know what you're doing. They want to understand why they should invest in you. What's the specific quality of what you're making and doing? Do you have already successes? Is there a record of things you did? So they try to take a look at who you are in the total concept of entrepreneurship. And then if they like what they see, in the end, they're going to give the money. You need to make at least break even. You have to invest material costs you might hunt an office. You might want equipment. You have an infrastructure. You might need a computer. You need heating, electricity. So you have to make some kind of calculation. What is your level of income that you would like to reach? You have to calculate what your minimum income should be and the turnover that you need in order to persist and sustain all the way. So this is what we discuss when we think about entrepreneurship. Two different methods. One is the marketing approach, trying to get the audience, your target group, get 
product or the service to the market. Calculate what it should cost in order to be sustainable. The other side is you try to develop a product while you not really know what the final product is going to be. It's a process, creative process, that you develop in order to get a certain solution for a wicked problem. And in the end, you have to make it profitable. That's it for today.